It feels like everything recently has been one big blur. I wake up, go on my phone, go on my computer, go on my phone, go on my computer again, and then go to sleep, rinse and repeat. My screen time has been out of this world because it's my only connection to my social life, my academic life with school, and my work life with YouTube. Some of the most important parts of my life are accessible only through screens. And usually these activities have some clear delineation between them. But right now the lines are all blurred. Everything's coming through the same screens, whether it's social, academic, professional, or otherwise. The problem with this is that digital windows can never truly represent the richness of real life. They can only represent compressions of it. Inherently, by their construction, information is lost. How can a Zoom call with a friend be as information-rich as a coffee with one? It, it can't be. You can't smell the coffee. You can't see their body language if they respond to what you're saying. You can't feel the cool breeze brushing over both of you. It's just impossible. Information is lost. And that doesn't mean that there's no information, that it's a valueless activity, but it means that there's less information. It's a less rich experience. And the same is true of every analog activity gone digital, because to digitize something is to compress it in some way. Some information is lost. Whether that be the smell of coffee, the reading of body language, the hearings of murmurings from your classmates as the professor makes a statement, these things have no place in the digital world. Compression is not necessarily a bad thing. It can be a good thing, and as an example, my computer science lectures have been compressed in some way. Now that they're online, rather than looking at how the slides are projected on the screen and how the professor is kind of mumbling and how people behind me are talking, all that information has been stripped away and what I'm left with is the most pure form of the lecture. The slides in front of me and the professor talking in my ear. It's perfect. I love it. It's, it's a great thing. The compression has really worked out in my favor there. And so compression is not a bad thing. So the problem is not generally with compression, but it's in the fact that my brain is not prepared for everything or almost everything that I'm doing to be compressed in this way. Socializing, school, work, everything has this extra information which is just stripped away from it when it moves digital. But my brain evolved and grew up and is used to existing in a world with that extra information. And that richness is something that I miss. I feel a little bit empty without it. Things just kind of feel mundane because all that I'm doing is, you know, doing the same kind of amorphous digital tasks. Because there's no extra information to differentiate between experiences, everything kind of blends together. And the intuitive resolution to this desire for more has been to pursue dopamine hits. I mean, really, that's that's kind of where my intuition has gone with this. I feel empty, and so I open Instagram. And when I say I feel empty, I don't mean like existentially empty. It's more of a bored thing. It's more of a like, well, I have some time to fill. But it's just this kind of mundane existence. Nothing's changing. There's no richness. There's no surprise. I'm going to Instagram because I know I'm going to get a dopamine hit. And I do. And it's good. And it's not a bad thing. But it's not providing me with what I want. Fundamentally, I think this is really similar to the difference between pleasure and enjoyment, where pleasure is kind of this pursuit of short-term goals and short-term happiness. You know, it's, I'm going to go do this because it makes me feel good. And enjoyment is this pursuit of long-term happiness, long-term goals, without this kind of consideration necessarily for the short term. And I think that both of these things have merit in a healthy life, but I, I really think that enjoyment needs to take priority over pleasure. But the problem is that digital systems are not designed for enjoyment. They're designed for pleasure. Pleasure rules the attention economy because of how recommendation algorithms work and because of how the business model of a lot of these companies works. Attention is equal to revenue for them and so the more attention that they can get, which is very highly correlated with pleasure, it's fulfilling your animal desires, these dopamine hits, well then the more money that these companies can get. And so it, it's, a, it's a loop, it feeds itself. The internet is therefore really efficient at providing pleasure, and, and it is. It's a really great source of entertainment, but it's not what I'm looking for again. It's kind of at odds with, with the actual problem that I'm facing. The problem that I'm facing is a lack of richness in my life.
Everything feels mundane and flat. And so it's no solution then to be turning to these sources of pleasure to solve this problem because it, it doesn't solve the problem. It kind of only delays the effects. And I think there's a really deep question, one that I don't necessarily have an opinion on or, or feel like I need to answer about whether or not it's actually possible to attain enjoyment through a digital world. I'm not convinced of that. And there are interesting parallel arguments to be made in film classes when you're talking about uh, analog film versus digital film, whether they can actually capture the same thing. Fascinating world of academia. If you want to dive into those questions, feel free. But really, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about the practical implications of, you know, what can I do to fulfill this, this kind of emptiness, this kind of, you know, mundanity? How can I make life feel rich and exciting and not just gray. That's my challenge. It's to pursue this richness with the constraints of the pandemic, obviously, knowing that I can't be with friends as I could previously, knowing that my schooling is online, that more and more of my work is online. You know, how can I, how can I still have this richness in my life? To be completely honest with you, I, I don't really know. I am kind of at the stage of identifying the problem and coming up with solutions, but I haven't tested them. Um, but I have some theories. So the first is sleep. My sleep schedule for most of 2020 has been pretty horrible. And a lot of this is due to technology usage. It's due to me being on screens at night, which disrupts your circadian rhythm. That's a blue light thing. Uh, but it's also just a, a function of, you know, what activities are going on on screens. They're not exactly these restful activities. And so I'm, I'm finding myself less well rested, which means I'm more prone to kind of pursuing these hits of pleasure uh, rather than pursuing enjoyment. You know, I used to be a, a really good sleeper and I kind of gave up on that for a while and I, I regret that. So getting back to it. Another thing is scheduling in intentional time away from screens. And this is, this is a little bit difficult because screens, like I said, are my major connection to my social life. But I think it's important to, especially at the end of the day, to take some time off and to allow my brain to simply be quiet. But finally, I think that the greatest challenge and perhaps the greatest opportunity with this is to retrain my brain to react differently to this feeling that I'm missing something, that I'm bored, that something's not there, it's empty. There's a term called nomophobia, which is essentially referring to that, that weird feeling that you get. I don't know if you have this, but I definitely do. When you realize that your phone isn't in your pocket and you're unintentionally disconnected from the world. It's this kind of fear of being disconnected, this fear of being without your phone. And I think that this feeling is very closely tied to the feeling which I've been having recently of, oh, I have nothing to do. I'll pull out my phone and deal with whatever notification or scroll through whatever feed. You know, I, I think it's essentially the same feeling. It's this feeling of, I need something. I need richness. And so I'm going to pursue dopamine. But that's not always the right answer. It can be, for sure, but it's an option. It shouldn't be the option, right? And it is the option right now. It's the thing that I go to when I'm feeling this way. So the challenge then is to retrain my brain. When I feel that emotion, to recognize it, and rather than immediately to pull up my phone, to question it, to understand where it's coming from, and to see how else I could possibly answer it. I'd now like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I think that one of the best ways to break the mundanity that I've been talking about is to learn something new. And I think that one of the best ways to learn something new is through Skillshare. Recently on Skillshare, I took the street photography course by Trash Hand, where they teach you how to capture the life of your city. And I've always felt that cities have a certain energy to them which is easily experienced in person with your eyes with your body as you walk around but hard to capture hard to get on photo and on video and so it's really interesting to hear from an artist and hear how they do how they approach this i think that taking a creative course like this is a great way to learn to better express yourself so try something new and explore your curiosity the first thousand people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of skillshare premium membership and after that, it's only around $10 a month. Skillshare is an awesome online learning community, and I highly recommend it. So thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you're doing okay. Uh, I know a lot of people are going through tough times right now, and I hear you. You know, I'm with you. Um, 
and I hope you're, I hope you're taking care of yourself and, uh, and finding some, some richness in this life. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe if you do want to subscribe. Feel free to like, dislike, leave a comment. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm John Fish. I'll see you again soon.